All right, so as we were saying, um, the next way that you can get these two things together instead of just parenting those layers is you can put both of them in their own composition. It's just like taking these two layers and putting them in their own grouped folder that you can manipulate uh, on your own. So what we want to do now is let's select both of these. I'm holding shift or command on the keyboard or control if you're on Windows to select multiple uh, layers. Then I'm going to right click on it and click pre-compose. And I have two options, leave all attributes in here, that option's grayed out, so we're just going to move all attributes into the new composition. Uh, this new comp I'm going to name Boxy Body, and click OK. So now if you've noticed, everything is in its own composition named Boxy Body. And I have that composition inside the main comp of my uh, After Effects dash my name. So I'm going to double click Boxy Body. And we can see inside of there, his face is still moving off. So instead of having his position and animation, or position and rotation rather, applied to this layer, we're going to apply it to the outside comp. So what I'm going to do is select position, rotation, and also scale, because we scaled him down from his regular size. I'm going to hit uh, Command C on that to copy, and then go over to my main comp, and I'm going to paste those there. So now we have this composition represented by this tiny box right here as this one. Um, what we're going to do now is let's eliminate everything that we used. I just clicked uh, this little guy to turn off those. You could also just hit delete and it would wipe out your keyframes. So now nothing happens in the boxy layer and we're going to take both of those and scale those back up. Notice I've clicked them both so I can grab both of them at the same time. And let's make sure Boxy's nice and scaled up to about 100. A quick way to do that is just click Reset, and that resets that layer to its original standard, uh, standard values. I'm going to do that to the background box as well. So now these two boxes take up that whole frame. Now if we go back to our regular composition that we've just dragged these guys into, there's my Boxy. And my animation is applied to everything all at once. So it's a little complicated, but just know that you can take any number of layers and pre-compose them. And all that does, again, it's just the same as going to composition, making a new comp, and then dragging those layers inside of that new composition, and then finally taking that new comp and dragging it into your main composition as its own layer. So just think of it as an easy way to group. In fact, if you ever bring a project in from, uh, from Photoshop that has multiple groups, uh, listed out, and you've grouped your layers into multiple different uh, different layer groups. Those layer groups will come in here as compositions, uh, fully editable comps with all of your layers inside of it, which is kind of nice. All right, so now that we've got Boxy a nice little face and we have a nice animation happening for him, let's add a special effect. So what we're going to do is add some lightning to this. Why not? So first off, um, what you need to do is either have a layer that you can apply your effect to, or you can create a new layer to apply the effect to. So first off, let's try just applying it here to Box and see what happens. Um, effects work a little differently depending on what you're trying to get, but for this one, let's try to generate, I went up here to Effect, Generate, Lightning. Advanced Lightning, there it is. So by clicking that, what it's done is it's generating the lightning inside this little frame. Um, I don't want lightning in here to replace my boxy. I actually want the lightning over this entire layer. So instead of doing it this way, I'm going to go backwards, and I'm going to make a new layer that we can apply the effect to. So layer, new, solid. This solid is very important. I'm going to make black, and I'll show you why in just a second. So this entire black box now covers the screen, and that's the layer that we're going to apply our advanced lightning to. Get effect, generate, advanced lightning. And now, what it's done, notice is it's made the, the rest of that layer disappear. If we turn our transparency on, we can see that it's that black is really just still transparent. Um, some of these have an option um, that you can composite on the original, right there. So if I click that check mark, now it's compositing on the original box. And if, uh, if that check mark wasn't there, and you couldn't make your effect seen, you do have a mode, a blending mode option. Uh, for those of you that can't see this, just hit F4 on your keyboard, and that toggles between different controls. Your 3D controls, 
uh, your main controls, and then F4 toggles your uh, normal blend mode, all that different stuff. So we could just do add, that would add the lightning on top and ignore all the black. But fortunately, this control does have a composite and original switch. You can click that, and now we've got a separate layer that we can manipulate independently of our boxing. So the first thing we notice is we play this out, but that lightning isn't moving anywhere. Um, what you have to do is figure out what to animate in order to make this work. So let's start playing with some controls. Our origin can change, which can add uh, that crackling lightning effect. Um, what we can also do is change the direction that this lightning is going. Notice those are my two little points here. There's my direction, and then over here is my start point, or my origin of the lightning. Also, conductivity state. You can increase or decrease that over time. So if there's any kind of a change, it looks like it makes this lightning animate. So what I'm going to do is, I think I would like, let's think of what the animation we want. I think what we're going to do is have this lightning move with Boxy. And the thing that I want to move with him is the origin state. So here's our little Boxy guy. And I'm going to tie this to the Boxy layer. So I'm going to parent the boxy layer like we did before. And now, whenever it moves, you can see that lightning is shooting across the sky as well. Um, the last thing we want to do now is make this move a little bit. So I'm going to play with the conductivity state. Uh, any controls that you have up here in the effect control window, notice you can switch between project window effect control. Um, you also are going to have down here, I'm going to name this my lightning layer. and I'm going to click the drop down. So instead of regular transform controls, and again, what those do is move the entire box with the lightning inside it, rather than do that, I'm going to adjust the effect control. So I'm going to leave this layer over the top of everything, just like a blank piece of paper that has lightning inside of it. And then I'm going to change all the controls within that. So instead of moving the entire layer, I'm just moving some of the lightning from here. All right, so we got him shooting lightning out. Let's animate some conductivity. So right here at 0, 0, 0, we'll put on my stopwatch. Conductivity is at 0. And over the course of this, I'm going to want this to stay crackling throughout the entire thing. So I'm going to move my timeline all the way to the end. And I'm going to add some conductivity change. Any kind of change, it seems, is going to do this. You can see my lightning starting to crackle. If you want more conductivity change, I'm going to get that really nice and big. All right, so now if we play that out, it's going to play slowly at first while it renders, but you can see my lightning is shooting out across the screen. I'm going to stop it there. You don't have to render the whole thing, and if you do stop it, it's just going to repeat from where you left off, so it's a great way to pre-render some things. But there we go. Now we got Boxy, Conqueror of the World, Destroying All Things. Alright, there are a bunch of different effects that you can do if you want to on top of that. Let's say on this new layer, again I'm going to choose a solid, and I'm going to choose a black solid. And on top of that black solid, let's generate some laser beams. So Box is going to be firing some lasers. Uh, now, while we're selected on this, I'm going to add the effect to it. I'm going to go to Generate, and I'm going to do a beam effect. And notice that also has that same switch we had before, Composite on Original. So if you had uh, some kind of original layer that you wanted to see, instead of see through, you could click that to uh, change it. All right, this beam, you can do a couple things with that. Uh, notice in the effect controls, I've got a start point and an end point that I can fully click on and drag around. Um, if I don't see those controls, just click on the effect so it's highlighted, and you can see those come back. All right, so I've got a start and end point for my lasers, so I can do a couple things with this. Um, I've also got length and I can change my thickness on both sides. And what that is going to do is give you the option to make a lightsaber if you wanted to. You can have one character holding, uh, holding the hilt here and having that whole saber swing around. Or if you wanted to do a laser blast, you could bring those thicknesses back down. Again, you can click reset and that'll reset everything back to normal. And we can have it shoot across time. So here's my origin point and here's my ending point and it's just shooting lasers across time. So this is what we're going to animate. We're going to add some laser blasts. 
And the way we're going to do that is let's take a look again at how this is working. We want our laser blast to originate from Boxy. So let's put the starting point right there. Let's maybe say we're shooting lasers out of his eyeball. So there's going to be a starting point and his ending point I'm going to have all the way off screen. There we go. So now, the last thing I'm going to do is parent this layer to Boxy again. And there we go. It's sticking with him as he moves. So now what we have to do is animate the time parameter. So at the beginning, we don't have this floating out in space. We have it all the way in his eyeball right there. In fact, let's make it a little thicker at the starting thickness. That way it's going to look pretty ominous. Look at that sucker. Pew! Okay. So this laser right here, I'm going to click down. Remember, everything you have here, you can animate on the timeline. So I'm going to click my drop down on the beam, and that's all we're going to play around with is the time parameter. So I'm going to click my stopwatch to start the process. Right now, time is at zero. And as he flies across the screen, every 15 frames, I'm going to have him shoot out a laser beam. So now that we've moved 15 frames in, I'm going to move my time parameter. Oops. And let's make his length a little, a little smaller so we can actually see this thing happening. There we go, smaller length laser. There we go. All right, so now let's take a peek at it. Play it out one more time. Pew! And that's not quite working. And the reason why is we don't really want this entire beam to move with Boxy. So let's go a little bit back to plan B. Instead of parenting this to Boxy, let's try another way. We'll click that, turn it off. And we already had set our starting point. There we are, onto his eyeball. So let's just do that. Every time that it moves, we're gonna have him move too. So he's gonna shoot that laser beam out and from point A to point B. We want that starting point to animate as well. So here's our starting point right there on the eyeball. We want it to move up until the point that it is completely gone from the eye. So right about here. Move that starting point right where his eyeball is. So now, that's going to move with him. Pew! Now let's make that shoot a little faster across the screen. So he's shooting off in the distance. There's our boxing right there. All right, let's try that one more time. Play it out. And there's Boxy shooting a little laser beam out of his eye. So easy, easy ways to animate. All right. Um, hopefully that showed you a little bit of the starting process of animation. Go ahead and give it a shot with your own animation. Make your own box just using some layers. Pre-comp it and add a single effect. You don't have to do two if you don't want to. I'm going to wipe out my lasers. Just do one effect if you like. In there, there's a whole bunch. They've got uh, generations for, you can do lightning, you can do beam effects. Start to play with some of these and see what they do. And add your own special effect on top. You can also do lens flares, a whole bunch of different things. And remember, anything that you can animate in Photoshop, uh, you can import and animate here. So if you want to do some basic layer effects, in this case, it's called a layer style. Um, you could do drop shadows, you could do outer glows. If we wanted to make Boxy glow and his lightning glow since they're paired up together. Actually, we don't want to apply that effect there, do we? We can make Boxy glow with a layer style and do some really, really cool stuff with that if you wanted to. And all of those are, of course, fully, fully animatable. We can spread that out so you have a nice glow around Boxy. Voila! So play around with it, see what kind of effects you'd like to do on your own. You can make that pulse if you want to. And then we'll start getting some more advanced stuff in our next video. Thanks for watching and good luck.